So I'm here to uh, share with you some work that we've done within OCLC Research and the OCLC Research Library Partnership to take a look at where um, institutions in the OCLC Research Library Partnership are on their trajectory with engaging with issues around equity, diversity, and inclusion. And just to frame this a little bit, OCLC Research is an organization that is really, we're, we're a learning organization. Um, we, we take information and we synthesize it and then we share it back out to the broad library community and also within OCLC. Uh, so we really see ourselves as, as, uh, as learning along, along with the library community and on behalf of the library community. I am part of a group of uh, folks within OCLC Research that works with the OCLC Research Library Partnership. I know that several of you in the room are affiliated with RLP institutions. And we're a transnational group that uh, creates a network of peers that um, work on common issues together uh, and that can engage directly with OCLC research and, and with OCLC more broadly. Um, I did manage to get Australia on my slide here. Uh, uh, our, we 70% of our partners are in North America, but 30% are, are not. So it does, so the transnational thing is, um, it's, it's a real thing and it's a real, um, it's both a challenge and an honor to work with a group of, of institutions that is so, uh, so transnational um, in nature. As a learning organization, uh, we are trying to ourselves, as uh, library professionals, come up to speed on, on issues that are important to our community and equity, and inclusion, equity, diversity, and inclusion is such an area that is of broad concern, I would say, to uh, many, if not all, of the institutions that are in the OCLC Research Library Partnership. And as part of our, uh, our effort, to get ourselves educated and also to uh, share learnings with the broad community. We uh, have tried to incorporate um, equity, diversity, and inclusion into a broad range of programming. So not just the survey, uh, but also we uh, have a series, this OCLC Distinguished Seminar Series, which we host internal to OCLC, but also webcast out. And uh, under the leadership of my colleague, Rachel Frick, who's the executive director of the OCLC Research Library Partnership, we've really steered the Distinguished Seminar Series to look at issues around equity, diversity, and inclusion, and our last three speakers um, have focused on those issues. So I urge you, these are really high quality, great talks. Um, they're available on, online on our website, uh, and I urge you to check them out. Um, the survey itself was uh, carried, out, carried out by my colleague, Karen Smith Yoshimura. Many of you know her, she does terrific work. Um, uh, it was conducted between September and October of last year and was uh, issued within the OCLC Research Library Partnership. Um, the full results of the EDI survey and all of our other work that relates to EDI is available at oc.lc. Uh, slash EDI. I hope you don't gallop off there right away, but just uh, bookmark that um, for the future and I'll share that again at the end of the presentation. Um, so so we, uh, in, in doing the survey and doing this work, we've uh, really consulted with and relied on the definitions in the American Library Association's uh, statement on equity, diversity, and inclusion and are using their definitions for equity, diversity, and inclusion, which are allied but a little bit different. Um, and uh, many institutions uh, will frame these as, as EDI or diversity initiatives or, uh, or, or inclusion initiatives. But oftentimes these have a really um, kind of a social justice tie to, to what, the, um, what the institution is doing. And it also, uh, Mr. Keating's remarks um, today I think really resonated with me. We all aspire to have libraries be be open and as open and inclusive as possible. And I think that what uh, looking at equity, diversity, and inclusion allows us to do is to remain curious about how as as open as we intend to be gives us an opportunity to reflect on are we being as inclusive and welcoming to everybody in our communities? Do our workforces look um, inclusive? Do our collections reflect the communities that we, we serve? Do our services feel welcoming to everybody? So there's really a broad variety of ways that, that EDI can express itself, and that's something that we definitely saw in the survey. 
Um, so we issued this, as I said, between September and October of 2017, and really used this opportunity to get a snapshot of EDI activities within the OCLC partnership that could guide us in identifying specific follow-up activities, but would also give us an opportunity to share out broadly uh, what this group of institutions were doing. Um, so we sent the survey out to uh, the partner representatives at each institution. We have one partner rep because we wanted one, one response for, for each institution. Um, here's the breakdown uh, by, by institution. I want to say that um, Canada, although there was only three responses, that's a 75% response rate, so go Canada. Um, <laughs> uh, Australia, there's eight in Australia, so Australia did even better. Go Australia. Uh, so we should have had percentages by, by representation there. Um, so we asked, there were, there were two questions that everybody was required to answer. Uh, one was, do you have a group in the library that's actively looking at or working on um, EDI issues? Uh, and 72% um, either do have one or are planning on having one. So this is pretty well integrated uh, within, within <coughs> library services. And, um, and then we also asked uh, how many people were using EDI principles to inform practices, and that was 79%. Um, so, so pretty, pretty high. Uh, um, lot, lots of libraries are, are in fact doing this, of those who, um, who uh, responded to the survey. Uh, here is a slide that you can't read at all, um, but I'm gonna tell you the parts of it that are important. Uh, in terms of, uh, that we asked in 12 different areas, um, we asked where they have changed practices or where they are planning to change practices due to their institution's EDI's goals and principles. Um, so the top three areas uh, that have changed are in activities and events, recruitment and, intentment, uh, recruitment and retention for the library <coughs> workforce, and outreach to marginalized communities. Um, collection building was fourth with 73% uh, of, of people uh, indicating that that was important. Um, the top three areas where people intend to plan um, but haven't yet, so 70% or more, are search and discovery interfaces and metadata descriptions and library catalogs. Um, slightly more have changed metadata descriptions in archival collections uh, than, than plan to. So that, that kind of distinction between um, changing things that are in the, the uh, kind of the, the regular catalog versus archival uh, collections, there's been more activity in things that relate to unique and distinctive collections. Um, so to put this into a form that you can read, um, here are the things that people have already changed uh, and they're, they're ranked. Um, and then here are uh, practices and service areas where people plan to make changes. And uh, spaces is uh, something that, that people both have made progress in and plan to uh, make progress in. So now I'm gonna walk through um, just some examples uh, from the survey and it'll show kind of the wide variety of ways in which um, EDI uh, work is playing out um, in research libraries as represented in the Research Library Partnership. Um, so uh, Duke University is an example of one of those that has a, a very active, um, they primarily see their form of engagement as through this uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, or DIVE-IN, uh, which surfaces as issues that need attention. Um, they said that uh, things that the dive-in group has done has, is to run an ongoing event series uh, to address accessibility issues for websites and other systems that are within the library's purview and to also uh, implement a gender neutral bathroom uh, policy across the libraries. Uh, at Texas A&M, they are an example of an institution that is uh, making changes in the workforce and they have a three-year diversity residency for minority librarians who want to work in, in academic libraries. And this is something that we see um, uh, as, a, as a growing thing within the United States is these three-year uh, diversity residencies. Um, in, at Monash University, this is an example of an institution that's looking very closely at their spaces. Um, they 
Uh, the library works to highlight indigenous places in the university, including indigenous art, art within the library. So that recognition of, of space and place. Uh, Brandeis University is uh, looking at the, the, the community that they're embedded in, in Boston, and looking at how they are embedded within the community that they serve, um, and increasing documentation related to students of color, uh, and looking at, at um, weaving those collections, uh, that documentation into uh, learning student light and, and activism. Uh, with the library at the at the center of that work, uh, LSE here has um, worked on is is leveraging existing collections, so organizing and promoting public events related to their extensive LGBT collections. Um, and this is just a, a word here. I I use uh, publicly available because I want to be able to share my content. I use these uh, things from Wikimedia Commons. So you should all go out and look online and see what your library looks like on Wikimedia Commons. Because <laughs> uh, I get a lot of these. Um, sometimes I can find great images. Sometimes I can't. Uh, at Brigham Young University, curators are working with marginalized communities, again, uh, that are reflected in their surrounding community to acquire materials for collections including Hispanics and Native, Amer and Native Americans. So here, um, looking at uh, acquiring new materials and building up collections to look like uh, the community that they're situated in and also the students that they're, they're seeing on campus. Um, Ohio State University, again, building collections in particular areas, uh, Middle Eastern, African American, Latin American comic artists to relate to their, uh, to the, um, to the uh, uh, cartoon museum, um, African American theater, uh, LGBT, Native American primary sources, et cetera. Uh, at Princeton University, they are using their EDI initiatives not only to, uh, for the library to help serve as a source of historical reconciliation uh, within the community and acknowledging Princeton's um, relationship to, uh, to enslaved peoples, but also uh, to connect the library with the Historical Society of Princeton and to the public, public library. So this is an, uh, using EDI as an opportunity to engage with um, with other community partners, and they've uh, had this, um, you know, website and symposium series, and and also public lectures that are throughout the entire community. So not just on campus, but also uh, within the community. Uh, the University of Delaware is likewise working with the African American community and other collaborative partners to preserve and collect oral histories and digitize personal photos and materials. So. Um, so connecting with communities and also, um, also building collections and trying to do so in a sensitive and respectful and inclusive manner that um, where you're not just kind of remotely documenting a people but doing it in, in collaboration with those people. Um, language is really important and here I don't know why I don't have a label. There it is. Um, uh, language is really important at La Trobe University. Uh, they work to s change the salutation in their library system to identify people by the, uh, by the salutation that they feel most appropriately matches their uh, gender preference. So Mr., Ms., and Mix uh, to be, yeah. So, so labeling and language uh, really matters. And this may seem like a small thing, but I wanted to call it out as a, as a, um, as a particular effort. Um, Library of Congress is working with Native American nations to appropriately label their digitized collections. Um, so, so again, working working with a community and that uh, those issues around um, naming and labeling and trying to do that in a respectful and inclusive manner. Um, University of Manitoba, as Jonathan pointed out, there's this really uh, remarkable work that's going on that is in conjunction with the truth and reconciliation work that's going on in Canada. University of Manitoba and other institutions um, are working with indigenous communities to incorporate appropriate subject headings in archival and library print and digitized collections. And this is a really, um, it's a very complicated uh, issue because the, the language that we have traditionally used in, uh, li in library subject headings is, um, is, is damaging to the communities that, um, that, that were, that are just, and their, and their, uh, the artifacts that are 
that are in the collections that are uh, describing them. So um, this was a really uh, wonderful example, and we highlighted it in a uh, works in progress webinar where, um, where we highlighted work that was being done both uh, by the Association for Manitoba Archives and the University of Alberta Libraries. Um, and they talked about their work to, as I said, accurately, appropriately, and respectfully represent indigenous peoples in context and, and su subject terminologies. And it's not just a matter of flipping a switch and changing the subject terminologies. It really is um, a, a complicated process and needs to be done thoughtfully and in conjunction with the, um, with the community. This is one of our, uh, within the OCLC Research Library Partnership, we have these works in progress webinars, and this was one of our both most highly attended webinars and most highly viewed after the fact. So that, again, indicates a, a high interest in this, in this type of work. Um, and I know that this is not the only institution that's, that's grappling with, with how to make these changes and adjustments. Um, another very highly attended and uh, and and also watched after the fact webinar was uh, one that was put on by um, MIT libraries uh, talking about their uh, collections directorate and how um, they have looked at how they can take EDI principles all the way down to the ground through all of their processes and even looking at the types of systems that they acquire uh, as being um, and, and EDI, and uh, you know, again, this is a, um, they really take a social justice uh, sort, of, um, sort of framework in looking at their work in librarianship, um, how they're serving their community, and how they can uh, more respectfully and inclusively uh, serve a research community. So I encourage you, for, for both of these webinars, um, there's links to them if you go to that oc.lc uh, slash EDI. Uh, you'll find links to these webinars and all of the the other talks that I've that I've highlighted here today. Um, so, in the biggest institutional challenges, um, there were some uh, there were some uh, recurring themes in uh, what what were the challenges that people face. Uh, one is building relationships with marginalized communities, and that is um, uh, as as Jonathan said, this is. Um, this is, this is long-term work um, and work, especially when you're dealing with uh, communities that need reparations. It's, um, it's, a, it's a process and you're, you need to be in it for the long haul and to build uh, trust. Um, recruiting staff that look like, uh, that reflect the demographics that we would like is, is also challenging as well as recruiting people, uh, retaining people that, um, that have been recruited through those, through those efforts. Um, Developing more inclusive organizational structures and building a shared understanding of what's meant by diversity, inclusion, and social justice, creating a positive work climate where people don't feel excluded by these terms um, and feel like you know they're really for somebody else, uh, kind of making the case that this is really um, we're all stronger together. Uh, having work centered around specific initiatives um, can be a real challenge. So, kind of. Uh, the, the EDI work is somebody else's job or it's going on over there rather than having it be understood as a shared value that is implemented by, uh, implemented and, and understood by everybody. And creating a, po a positive um, climate and understand that you're going to have conflicts within um, when you're dealing with difficult uh, issues and so striving to keep things positive and to uh, help address um, conflicts as they as they come up, and of course this takes um, time, resources, funding. So recognizing that rather than uh, kind of giving it a little bit of time and attention, recognizing that it's going to take time, attention, and funding. Um, so the people who said that they didn't have something within the library, uh, what what about those institutions? So that was 20 per, 28 percent of institutions said that they were not. Um, so uh, in many cases, um, they saw the, the EDI initiatives were something that was going on at the institution more broadly, not necessarily within the library, but not, uh, it didn't, they didn't feel like they needed to be strategically driven at the library because that was happening um, at, a, at a higher level. Um, or, uh, you know, there's, 
the pool of applicants uh, was, was called out. Um, uh, the university already has established programs and the library participates in those. Um, everybody has to participate in awareness training, so we're covered. Uh, that was one. Um, our university just does this as part of, uh, part of our business. Um, and we aspire to an inclusive approach to all that we do so we don't have this as a, as a specific um, thing. Uh, so that is what I have to share with you today. Again, you can uh, find out more about our work. Uh, there's much, much more details about, about the survey and you can uh, dig into details there and uh, see our videos and ask us questions. Thanks. Thank you.